Don't worry about it. Well, thank you all so much, everyone who has been donating towards that Borderlands 2 DLC run. The number just keeps climbing. And reminder, that's the next run coming up. So we're about $6,600 out of 15,000. So please keep those donations coming. And speaking of that, we have $50 from Anonymous that says, there's a bonus incentive for more Borderlands 2. Count me in. My friends and I had a lot of fun playing the Borderlands series together and I'm excited to see it run live. Good morning from Germany. We have $50 from O. Luke that says, it's never too early to start donating towards the Ocarina of Time beta showcase. And I absolutely agree. All right, it looks like we are just about ready for our Borderlands 2 run by Deceptics. Take it away. All right, hello everyone. Welcome to Borderlands 2. I am Deceptics, and behind me I have some wonderful people on the couch if they would like to introduce themselves. Hi, I'm Amerlin. I used to run this game a lot, and then I stopped, and then everyone else got better than me. <laughs> I'm ZZeroes21, ZZ. Um, I'm a current runner and one of Deceptics' co-op partners for the co-op version of this category. Uh, I'm Brian Otto, and uh, I just woke up, and I'm here. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go. All Let's right. go. <laughs> All right. Uh, there's a little bit of info we're going to get into before the run starts, but uh, we can do that from in this menu. Um, a big thing about this run is that it is a New Game Plus run, so we will be starting with gear, as you can see from the inventory. Um, this is played in the third playthrough, UVHM. Um, and a couple things that really only matter here. Uh, our North Fleets are going to be for damage, and then our Bada Booms are going to be for rocket jumping, which is going to be our movement system throughout the entire run. Uh, these are lower levels, so they don't uh, hurt us, because that would be quite bad. Uh, and then we have a Sham, which has a 94% chance to absorb bullets. Um, it really likes to not be 94%, but we'll see how that goes. Um, there's a couple other things in the backpack, which I won't go into detail, but uh, I will when we actually start using them. Um, so here we are. And then we have the skill tree. Uh, if you've played Borderlands 2 before, you might notice that there are actually uh, more skill points in the skill tree than normal. Uh, we have a glitch that we can use to dupe said skill points. Um, so we take whatever we want, and we don't take whatever is slow. And then while this is a New Game Plus run, we run with the New Game Plus stats disabled, because it would make the run uh, a lot more boring. Um, but yeah, with that out of the way, uh, we can start the timer in three, two, one. Sorry. Go. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great way to start it. Claptrap likes to talk. Don't worry. Yeah. So immediately, you're going to notice uh, he's playing Salvador, the Gunzerker. Uh, Salvador action skill has two guns, because two is better than one. Uh, and so you can do double the damage twice as fast, something like that. And uh, a lot of the beginning of this is really about movement, because the Norfleets that he's using have, their splash damage is huge. It, they may look really small when they're firing, but it, they cover a massive area, uh, and it goes through walls too. Oh, So a lot of rocket jumping involved here, uh, and he's just going to be getting the spawns down as fast as possible. And then safe quitting, because safe quitting uh, advances to the next point in the quest dialogue, and double safe quitting like that skips to the... Uh, it continues to advance the quest even further, so there's going to be some single save quits and some double save quits. So he's going to play an Echo here, and that's going to do a sequence skip, which, after this Hammerlock cutscene, uh, will allow us to give Hammerlock Claptrap's eye a lot faster, because dialogue priority is a little messed up in this game, and uh, playing Echoes has a really high priority, higher than most dialogue in the game. What are echoes? Sorry, I, I forgot. Oh, it's uh, every character uh, spawns with an echo log. Yeah, like Bioshock sort of to like Bioshock uh, dialogue logs. Okay, sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's a little backstory of the character. Uh -oh. Okay. Good morning. So we also have a free scroll mouse. This step has uh, interact bound to free, uh, scroll down. So if you interact with a character really fast, it makes that noise, and I hope y'all love hearing <laughs> it because you're gonna hear it for the whole run. There's a couple points where you actually hear it, but a lot of it will. You won't hear it a lot of the time. Yeah. Don't worry. So echologues are one way that we can skip dialogue. Another way that we can skip dialogue is using side quests. So uh, this is just a, an any percent run, essentially. We're just trying to beat the story as fast as possible. Uh, so we don't need to do this, the side quest to progress the, the run. 
but doing the side quest unlocks other side quests that we can use later for dialogue skips. Um, we'll get to it more whenever we actually pick them up. So this beginning sequence is a lot of escorting Claptrap as he moves through uh, a bunch of various things, and the, the area that Claptrap moves is actually pretty small. You saw he ran pretty close to him there. Uh, it's, it's literally about that big. Oh, okay. We're good. Do you have time for a donation in here? Uh, yeah, one, go ahead. One, we can do one right here. One quick one thing. Quick thing. So Sounds good. Does, does, oh, that, one. does that finish that side quest? And by finishing that one side quest, it unlocked two more. Um, so he picked up those two side quests. Every side quest has an intro dialogue that sort of explains what the side quest is. And that intro dialogue has really high priority, same as the echologues. So uh, by picking it up underneath the first side quest, we stored the second side quest. So we're going to use that a little bit later to skip dialogue. So we'll get to that whenever we end up doing that. Yeah. OK. Now, tell it. OK, great. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, this is a special one. We have $25 from S'more that says, Deb from Gearbox here wow. in person oh. at SGDQ. Oh, oh, oh. Wow. OK. Can't wait for the Borderlands 2 <laughs> run. <laughs> Thank you so much. We always love to get dev support here. Thank you so much. All right. So skips the bridge. Uh, he hits Claptrap's trigger on the other side to get him to move across the invisible bridge early. And then drops his guns, with cancels gun zerking, and starts the cooldown for it really fast. Gun zerking being the ability allows you to yep. do a yeah. wheel. Two yeah. guns. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. Right. Uh, and it's the little the red, purpose. currently red box in the lower left, so you can watch it cool down. So this is first boss in the game. Um, second, technically, but second, the first boss in the run. Extremely easy, not a problem at all. <laughs> cool. Boss, by the way. And that's the boss. Yeah. <laughs> is that, that going to be what most bosses look like? Yeah. That's that's right. Right. Okay. Yeah. okay, so it, right now, it he's using a North Fleet. It's going to get worse. Uh, <laughs> or better. Bosses become even more of a Depending joke. on your point of view. All right, so he's using a bunch of... Ec so one of the things we didn't quite explain is that he has a bunch of echoes in his backpack because we can also duplicate those through another glitch. Uh, so he's just using them for a bunch of dialogue skips there. So play an echo, hear the dialogue line, play another echo, it gets skipped. So here you can start to see why we use Salvador movement-wise. Um, this is not the route you're supposed to take to get to this area. Whoa. But, Whoa. <laughs> yeah. Shocking. Uh, <laughs> but using his, his skills and his action skills and rocket launchers, he can just go directly to Claptrap and skip that was sick. a big area. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, should we explain double shot? Might as well. Yeah. All right. So there's a glitch he's been using this whole time uh, that we really haven't talked about because it's really hard to notice. It's, it's really hard to notice. But you'll notice uh, whenever he shoots, his left hand will punch. And that's a glitch called double shotting, where you shoot and hold down the shoot button. Melee. Reload, reload, then melee. Reload, melee, and you'll, you'll automatically shoot again. So that's really broken for things like the highest damage rocket launcher in the game. Uh, or the rocket jumping yeah. rocket launcher. So it, uh, the reason we use the bottom booms is because it fires six rockets at a time. So whenever you're dual wielding them, it's 12 rockets. And whenever you're double shotting both of them, that's 24 rockets. Yep, which is why he can, Salvador can go. How many, how many actions in like a, in like a, like a second? A lot. a lot. This is a very high APM run. Yeah, I was going to say, so he, he, like, it sounded like you explained that he was doing four things like every yes. time he shoots. Yes. Okay. Yeah, it's All right. running and then shooting, reloading, meleeing, while also jumping somewhere in between that. Do you have like any special like binds to allow with that, or are you just kind of like, uh, are you just kind of spidering all over the keyboard? Binds. So, um, I'm sorry. my reload button is R, and then melee is B. So B, B, yes, B is in boy, yes. He has his thumb like on the space bar, and he hits it with his. It makes zero sense. Oh, okay, okay. that's like in Titanfall when we do crab sticks, for you kind of a similar thing. Yeah, yeah same okay. idea. And that's why yeah, yeah. you know how to do it like that. Yeah. yeah. Um, another way of double shotting is also by swapping away instead of meleeing. Uh, you'll see that actually in a lot of different places. Um, We'll take a little break uh, here, but here's Captain Flint. Here's our next boss. Um, we kind of already went over. Boss uh, bosses don't last very long. He's dead. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then we need to just clear some enemies here. So once that's done, uh, drop our guns, cancel guns, there, and then we're going to pick them back up. Yeah. Um, one piece of tech you saw me use there is uh, like kind of using Salvador's skill called Autoloader, which if you get a kill while you, uh, if you get a kill, it'll reload the guns that are not currently in your hands. So you can use that to instantly reload the bottom booms. Or if you can swap before the North Fleet pilots land, you can actually use it to reload the North Fleets so that you can uh, shoot them because rocket launchers take a very long time to reload. It's actually really impressive 
watching him yeah. decide, uh, watching him decide when he's going to swap away to reload the bottom booms and when he's going to swap away to reload the. No it's really impressive. And uh, yeah, something I feel like we didn't really touch on at the start of the run, but the Septics has been really good at Borderlands 2 for like a, a long really time. long. Like it's yes. very special yeah. that he's here. Uh, he finally basically was old enough to run a game at a GDQ as a. Okay, okay, my apologies. So anyway, here's <laughs> Scroll Interact happening some more. Anyway, <laughs> it's super <laughs> sick that we have to step here for this. And uh, it's really special to get to see this run. This run is like incredible. And like, I, I feel like even I'm, I'm still kind of waking up and just watching this. Yeah. And I don't know, like, I, it, it, <laughs> is it as hard as it looks? Because it yes, looks okay. it is, it oh, is, yeah. incredibly yes. difficult. This is, yeah, I feel like, I mean, you, you never see Borderlands played like this. So yeah. This is so sick. It's time for a donation. Uh, real, hold on, real quick. Uh, so we have uh, a lot of our movement option is going to be rocket jumping, um, but there's going to be a couple places where we will use cars, uh, most notably in like very long movement sections because we need to worry if we were rocket jumping about ammo management, our gun zerk duration, things like that. So we'll just be using cars for a lot of the uh, the very long movement sections, which I know is quite boring, but we don't really have any other option. Yeah. Having to like manage ammo over that long a period is is difficult. So I yeah. would imagine. Would it be like technically faster to use rockets if you didn't have to maybe. reload? Maybe. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And like, how do you go about like ammo recovery with these like long form? So that's like, the thing like, with the, like rocket boostering. The shield that he's using, the sham, has a ninety-four percent to not Obs only abs not only like negate the damage, but also just absorb it into your. Backpack. Oh. Okay. Okay. So that. Okay. So the so, absorb is not just like a defensive thing. It's yeah. Okay. So each of the twenty-four rockets that he's shooting, like it costs one ammo and spawns six, so there it costs four ammo, it spawns twenty-four. Each of those twenty-four can be absorbed. Okay, so is, it's, it can be effective almost infinite ammo. Then, yeah, right? exactly. Okay. Yeah, right. pretty much. As long as the sham is up, we have infinite ammo. Yeah. <sighs> I love oh. that. Oh, oh, okay, Bolimong. Good to see you. So, Good morning. So while scroll interacting gives really fun sounds, um, the reason that we have it uh, set up this way is because for some enemies, if you talk to them twice in the same kick, then it will skip their dialogue. And this is the first instance that we use it to skip uh, Corporal Reese's dialogue right there. Um, by scroll interacting on him, he... <laughs> by scroll interacting on him, he uh, progresses the quest immediately. And what is, uh, what's the tick rate of this game? Question mark. <laughs> Question mark. Okay, I was going to say, if you're trying to interact <laughs> with him on the same tick, yeah, I was curious. It's uh, the quest point duping, or the skill point duping we managed earlier is tick perfect on, on off-host co-op, okay. which is awful. So. <laughs> yeah. All right, so there's going to be a lot of save putting through here because this is a bunch of like talking to people and then waiting for animations to happen. Go here, do this. Go here, do this. Go here, do this. Yep. Traditional Borderlands fashion, I feel yep. for stuff like this. Yep. Yeah. So do we have time for some, some donations then? Yeah, go yeah. ahead. Awesome, thank you. We have $500 from Kova. Thank you so much. And it says, so hyped to see Seppi's Borderland runs. Let's get that bonus run in. Yes, and Seppi. I absolutely agree. We're almost at nine thousand out of fifteen thousand dollars on that. So be sure to get your donations in. Uh, one more is good. Awesome. Sounds good. We have twenty-five dollars from Lady Cyndaquil that says, "Let's go to Septics. So happy for you and the Borderlands community. One hundred and four train, choo choo." Yeah. So this introduces Scooter, the best character in the game. <laughs> and unfortunately, we're going to do the same thing we did with Corporal Reese, and we're going to skip all of his dialogue. Yep. And there's So uh, we can pick up the power cores right away instead of having to listen to him talk for um, actually quite a long time. Um, I don't like Scooter, so I don't really care that we skip it. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I'm fighting <laughs> words. <laughs> we'll, <laughs> fighting words for we'll, we'll figure crazy. out later who your favorite character is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so there's a bunch of jumping around town, a bunch of just putting power cores in. Uh, you don't have to go buy anything from Crazy Earl in this playthrough because they assume you already know how to do that. But they'll still give you the other tutorials. Yep. Yes. Just just get rid of that one, though. It's <laughs> weird. So, uh, so before, I, oh, before go you go there, go ahead. Um, whenever it comes to the inventory layout, uh, you've noticed two of one rainbow gun. Um, here's the use of one of them. We put it in the bank. Yep. That's it. That's <laughs> the entire use of that gun. Oh, it's for like, is that like a, like a tutorial clear? Yeah, yeah, so you have, you have an entire gun for this NG Plus playthrough just for that. Well, so he actually doesn't have enough inventory space to get the Echo. So we have to swap a gun, and it's just organized alphabetically. That's cool. I like that. So this right here is actually probably one of the most difficult sections. Um, it's a really, a lot of tight corridors. Jam. <laughs> 
That's 94%. Yep. yep. 94, uh, 94%, by the way. So a lot of tight corridors, a lot of terrain that doesn't make any sense. Um, you'll see some weird routes that he's taking, and that's just because what you see is not where the collision actually is. Um, and it's a lot of... A lot of dude. I love you just like skimming across the ground. Yeah. That yeah. is so cool. There's so much auto loader stuff going on here where he like swaps to the North Fleet, shoots, waits for the kill, and then the bottom wounds are reloaded and he just keeps going. Wow. Oh, hello. 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 Not a tight quarter. <laughs> um, one other thing that getting kills does is it extends gun circuit duration. Um, he doesn't have very long gun circuit duration, so he has to get some kills to make it through the rest of the area. And what does the cooldown look like on it? 60 seconds, I think? Really? It, it does not feel like that. Oh, uh, so getting uh, kills speeds it up, right? and shooting enemies speeds it up. Uh, the class one I have on also gives us a bonus cooldown rate. Yeah, so. gotcha. Okay. It's 60 seconds base, I think. Yeah. No idea. Uh, so the quest we did at the very beginning of the game uh, is going to come into play here for uh, a dialogue skip. Uh, Lilith can shut up. And then one of the only times that we need to change the interact bind is here, because we cannot hold the scroll wheel, as you might expect. <laughs> so we need to revive Lilith here. And we're immediately going to go back. Yep. Immediately go back to it. Uh, and then, again, we can actually scroll skip Lilith here, skip uh, all of her dialogue, and actually, like, multiple animations. No idea why it works, but it does, and thankfully it does. So there's another wave fight here. Um, it, this fight is really hard in any percent conceptually because you're really short on XP. But this is your DVHM where you have all of the gear and experience already. So you just, it's really boring. Um, so before we can get a couple donations here, actually. All right, fantastic. They are coming in for that incentive. So we have $500. From the fun cannon. It, oh, <laughs> the PSP. And uh, they say, best of luck on the run, Deceptic. I'm so incredibly proud of the Borderlands speedrunning community and how far the game has come in the past few years. Here's the 94% being more like 100% for the rest of the run. Already. <laughs> Already showing that it's not like that. Yeah. <laughs> we have time for another one? Yeah, yes. go ahead. Awesome. We have $15 from Mopi that says, Dear Deceptics, after like 10 years, now we're gaming. <laughs> Thanks for everything you've done for the Borderlands community, man. Yeah, those are two really, uh, really big Borderlands community people. Uh, FC was one of the first people to pioneer this game and really push it to its limits. And Mopi is a uh, really, really skilled uh, right, challenge run player. I mean, you and FC were running it last time. Was it? Yeah, yeah. You. we ran in 2019. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. cool. All right, so now we're going to uh, Three Horns Valley. I legitimately do not remember Valley. what it's called. <laughs> uh, it's in the corner there. Yeah. You can I, look. I, I wrote out my splits for it and then never paid attention to it again. <laughs> uh, so we got a honk to get into that area, but they don't That's trust what that us. Was about. Okay, so now we have to go to the dust and blow up a bunch of bandit cars to make a bandit car. I don't know why we can't just steal a bandit car, but you know, whatever. Because that would be too easy. Yeah. They didn't add it. In and the we game. also get to blow up bandit cars, so that's probably more fun. Yeah. <laughs> so ordinarily, what you're supposed to do is get in a car and go around uh, finding a bunch of these cars to blow them up. But we're Salvador. We have two rocket launchers, and rocket launchers are faster than cars. <laughs> I, was hope I was hoping this is how this mission played <laughs> out. Yeah. So yeah. there's actually <laughs> five or six different spawns around the map, but it is just a lot faster to save quit and respawn the first two. Right here? Yep. Um, so we're just going to do this three times, and then we're done. Yep. Cars um, have really weird scaling in the later playthroughs. Um, even if you're doing this with the car, they die almost immediately. Interesting. Yeah. Except in OP levels, where cars are pretty useless. But we don't talk about that. Yeah. <laughs> so question, if I have time. Yeah, go yeah. ahead. How much... I guess, so when, when, I, when I look at this, obviously your entire loadout seems like super optimal. Like, how much time goes into whether it's like collecting items for it or like planning out what is or isn't optimal? Like, like, uh, like what goes into that? What do you think is easy? Like five minutes, maybe? Yeah. Um, in terms of actually getting the weapons, everything we have is obtainable in-game, but that doesn't mean we obtain it in-game. Yeah. Um, we save uh, at it to get the save. Save at it, okay. Uh, All right. yeah. But we can theoretically farm everything that's okay. being used. You just wouldn't want to take a thousand hours for it. Yeah. So. Okay. All right, so upcoming, three things are going to happen really fast. I'm going to ask everyone to hold the applause so the youngest just goes really fast. First thing, he's safe quick to open the door, which spawns bad maw early. 
So now he's going to swap his inventory. He's going to use a Norfleet in the right hand and a Pimpernel in the left hand. Uh, Pimpernel is a DLC sniper, and it has a glitch associated with it that we call either Pimper Fleeting or Pimper Having, depending on what weapon you're using. Uh, the Pimpernel spawns a bunch of bullets that come out from the central one, and those get additional damage if you're using a uh, Norfleet or an Ahab in your right hand. So he's going to shoot Batman on the foot there. Goodbye. Boom, boss is dead. Cool. Collect the keys. Scroll and rack on the bridge. The bridge is open. <laughs> that went by really fast. Nice. Yes, it did. That normally takes like a minute. Uh, and then, now we're going to go into Bloodshot Stronghold, which is a U-shaped map with only one trigger right at the end. So if we can just get out of bounds with like grenade jumps and rocket launchers. Wow. Cool. Now we're at the end of the map. Well, oh, 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 okay. It's fine. We're, now we're sort of, okay. Do this. Now, now we're, now the we're at the end okay. of the <laughs> Yeah, there we go. That's way harder than it seems. And then we're going to go through Roland's cage door and rescue him from the inside. Cool. We did it. Thank go you. us. <laughs> the back of the, the jail cell actually doesn't person. exist uh, because yeah, it gets broken in the cutscene and they don't expect you to be there. So yep. thankfully, we can just walk through and then rescue Roland from the inside. This will just take a second. Don't worry about it. Yeah, that, that skip is way harder than it seems because everything in, in Bloodshot has just really weird collision. And there's also an area that if you fall into, you have to save quit to get out of because otherwise you can't get out of it. Speed jail. Yeah, speed jail is very sad. <laughs> so as you might expect, because we entered through the backside, the game isn't very happy that we're here. Uh, so we have to wait a little bit before we can actually move on to the next area or else we have to watch the entirety of that cutscene again and then wait before leaving. So I'm going to wait for a specific subtitle to show up, and then that um, means that we can leave. I thought you just tried to jump, rocket jump with a North Fleet there. <laughs> just have some fun. Yeah. All right, so now we're in Bloodshot Ramparts. Again, another place with a really weird collision. Um, all of the walls that you see through here in this like opening cutscene are higher than uh, their models would indicate. But they don't go too high, which is the important part. Yeah with you know, proper rocket jumping uh, and grenade jumping. Even with no, like, normal grenade jumping, we can get over most of them. But it's way easier when you have, you know, bada booms. So one more here to the end of the map. <sighs> Got over that wall, nice. Boss. If I can hit the right. Dead, yeah. hit the save point through the wall and save quit. That skips a wave fight. And then we're gonna go turn in this quest to Roland. Ronald, sorry. Ronald, <laughs> that's his name. Yeah. So while we just talked to Roland there, uh, we need to talk to him back in Sanctuary. And then if you notice, before I went to Frostburn Canyon for the first time, uh, I did a double save quit. And because this is a uh, later, this is one of the other playthroughs, um, if you unlock a fast travel in a previous playthrough uh, and then get to certain objectives, they'll actually open the fast travels earlier than you're supposed to have them, which skips having to just drive through some of the, like, the main hub worlds. Yeah. So this fast travel, you might not be aware, exists if you've played BLT before. Um, it's a hidden fast travel just in this farmhouse that's mm. much closer to all the objectives that we need than the main fast travel for the area. So this is the one that we end up using. Um, and it's actually really difficult <laughs> yeah. getting up this ladder. <laughs> so he sets up every single time. Yes. All right, so we're going to go meet Tina. Hip hip hooray. <laughs> you don't sound very excited for You're that. You're not excited. <laughs> Opinion redacted. <laughs> I like Tina. All right, so Tina talk here. He's going to try to talk to her before the cutscene starts. Mm. No, didn't get it. Yeah. Uh, if he get if he manages to talk to her, um, he can skip the uh, cutscene here by just safe quitting. I didn't have enough speed. Yeah, but oh well. I actually think he went over her. Guess we'll find out. Yeah. Yeah. yeah a little bit. <laughs> well, speaking of Tina, we have just passed ten thousand dollars for that bonus Tina DLC run. Yeah, that run is sick. It's I, a really neat run. You should really donate to it you, because yeah, it's we really so want to see optimal. This. <laughs> we absolutely want to see this. And, like, it's coming up fast. Be sure to get your donations, and we need about less than $5,000 towards that. Let's get that going. Yeah. All right, so we've talked to Tina, and now we're going to go get uh, the badonkadonks for her, which are just, you know, cruise missiles. And then we're going to go back to her and save code a bunch more, and she's going to uh, create bombs for us. You know, normal, normal thirteen-year-old thirteen stuff. stuff in the Portland <laughs> universe. <laughs> How many save quits are in this run? A lot. Uh, a lot. A lot. Okay. Good answer. <laughs> yeah. Borderlands as a game is pretty characterized by like save quitting, skipping a bunch of stuff, 
to the point where like when Borderlands 3 came out, which is, you know, one of the newer games in the series, uh, when the community was originally routing it, they had a document with a character where they logged every save quit, and it wound up being like 140 <laughs> over a... Uh, I think it's closer to Like a five-hour run. It's more now, but yeah. Wow. So the really high priority with the quests doesn't just happen whenever you play it from your backpack. So Tina gives us a quest after we pick up the bombs, and uh, this stuff can get to the location fast enough that if he picks up the quest, the dialogue is still Ooh. playing by the time he gets home. <laughs> That's a really good save. Uh, so the dialogue is still playing from the quest, so it's skipping the, the story dialogue. The one and only one. good Tina line? <laughs> 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 Someone clapped. <laughs> <laughs> so from here we're off to uh, the end of the line. Uh, this map is actually uh, S-shaped, and as you would expect, uh, isn't very fun to rocket jump through. But thankfully enough, there's actually a hole in the invisible wall right here, which allows us to traverse this map from out of bounds. And a lot of this stuff doesn't really have collision. It's kind of annoying to get through. Wow. Um, yeah, but we do need to go. hit this trigger. I w actually went over it uh, here. There we go. Uh, and then we can progress to the boss fights. Um, again, boss fights. Yes, this is Wilhelm. Even in story, he's kind of a chump. Goodbye, but... Wilhelm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so killing him that early actually makes the uh, core you're trying to pick up fly out of bounds, and that's really slow. So we just save quit and come back, and then it's right there. And then from here, we travel back to Sanctuary to insert the totally safe power core that we just picked up off of... Wilhelm. Totally normal. Totally normal, totally safe. Nothing's going to go wrong. Ever. <laughs> yeah. Just, it's, the, the precision required to do all these rocket jumps is so impressive, and like knowing all of the collision you can and can't hit with these is incredibly hard. You know, anytime he's doing anything that requires more than three or four, every single one of those is so planned out. I mean, yeah, this dude has been in the practice room yeah. like every day this week for like, I mean, it feels, I mean, I feel like every time I walked in the practice room, he was in there just, just sweating. <laughs> so yeah, this, uh, I would, I would imagine this really is as hard as it looks. Yeah. Yeah, Borderlands is known for its, um, wacky collision, whether it be stuff not having collision that you expect it, just bad placed collision. Yeah. So there's a lot of different things that may look solid uh, that aren't and that when you wouldn't think is solid, that are, uh, that we have to maneuver around. So right here, uh, after giving uh, Lilith her Iridium, uh, she's going to attempt to teleport the city. And then afterwards, it's normally like a um, like minute, minute and two minute long cutscene uh, that we can skip, uh, thankfully, just by save quitting after doing so. And then uh, right after the save quit, I'm actually going to select a previous playthrough. Now, um, Normally, you'd be locked out of Sanctuary in your normal playthrough, but we can just select uh, a previous one and fast travel to the next map we really need to be at um, because your location isn't saved per playthrough. So if we reselect UVHM, we are in Three Horns Valley instead of being stranded outside of Sanctuary. So we're on our way to the fridge. Um, the fridge in even normal runs is pretty hard because there's a lot of collision and you're normally moving pretty fast through it. In geared runs, again, you're flying through there with rocket launchers, mock speed. Uh, so it's really difficult to not get caught on a bunch of uh, collision. So he's going to go in here. This is the fridge. This is the fridge. And there's the fridge. And there's the fridge. <laughs> we did it. So the whole save point thing works and we can just leave. <laughs> there's no triggers in there. <laughs> we can just the move right trigger, past it. The only trigger is enter the fridge. So we entered and we can move on. He's just waiting for some dialogue to play and then... Helps me uh, clear it. my backpack yep. <laughs> for stuff I don't need. Makes menuing a little easier. All of the, you know, 145 items in there. Yeah, no, that's normal. <laughs> 145 out of 35? Isn't that how fractions yeah. work? Yeah. yeah. Do you have some community donations? Sure. Uh, yeah, We're sure. just yeah. killing another quote-unquote boss here. and uh, We can do one. Yeah. All right, sounds good. We have $20 from Tokaji that says... It is super awesome to see Deceptics running BL2 in the flesh at GDQ. No one deserves the stage more than you. Donation goes towards the Tina DLC incentive. I need as much Borderlands as I can get. <laughs> Thanks, Toki. Thanks, Toki. Thanks, Toki. All right. All right. So coming, up, coming up here, we just picked up a beacon. Um, 
Sanctuary is not on the fast travel map, so we need to get a new fast travel station that is on the map. Um, this is done by a really long wave fight. There's a lot of it Jack's trying to prevent us from getting back to Sanctuary, throwing a lot of enemies at us. It's a really long wave fight, but it has a failsafe, the beacon that we're trying to place right here. Uh, if it gets destroyed eight times, then it becomes invincible. The game kind of takes pity on you and says, focus on just killing the enemies. Uh, we'll, keep, we'll keep the beacon alive. Uh, just focus on doing that. Uh, we can break the beacon ourselves by using a friendly fire glitch using the <laughs> unicorn explosion. Um, wow. If you and on Pride it, Month, too, you love to see it. Uh, if you shoot it and drop it before the bullet hits the beacon, then it will do friendly fire damage, which we can break the beacon ourselves and just repair it over and over and over again. Once we get that invincible state, if we save quit, it will complete the quest. So you don't have to do the way fight at all. Um, it's one of the most significant skips and time saves that's been found in yep. somewhat recent years. So we destroyed it eight times, repaired it eight times. Uh, and we dropped the unicorn explosion on the ground and leave. We don't need it anymore. We don't need it anymore. <laughs> uh, but we save quit, and the quest is complete. And we're back to Sanctuary. Yep. Wow. Yeah, <laughs> that's... It's really easy. It used to be way harder. So from here, we have finally made it back to Sanctuary. And uh, we're actually going to pick up a couple side quests that we'll use for dialogue skips later. Uh, and then we're off to Wildlife Exploitation Preserve, which is actually one of the areas that has been or seen the most changes in the past like six to eight months. Um, normally, this map is split in half by a very long wave fight. And you might think, well, you can just tear everything apart. Why is that a problem? Um, the spawn delay between each spawn is horrendously long, and um, wave fights are horrendously boring. So um, we're actually going to try and skip that. Yeah, if you've, if you've played Borderlands and you've played Wildlife Preserve, uh, this is one of the sickest maps in this entire run. Uh, there's so many things going on here that just break the intended path over its knee. So there are a couple triggers he has to do before the wave fight, uh, which is why he's going the intended way currently. Um, so he kills those, wounds those enemies to open the door, and then he can go to the next point. I love these, I don't know what you call, I don't know what you call those, the quad jumps? The, yeah, the double grenade, the, double rocket jumps? Yeah, double grenade, quadruple bada boom jumps. <laughs> yeah. So we're going to play a quest, skip some dialogue, and then save quit, which is right before the uh, wave fight. And you might think, well, going back to the beginning of the map seems pretty uh, abnormal. Um, this map actually has a ton of invisible walls, um, which they made really tall, but not very wide. So we can actually just jump around this one right here and make it to a uh, part of the map we're not supposed to be at yet. However, there's also another invisible wall that we have to progress around. So by nade jumping right here and then rock jumping off of that, we can fall through this roof, oh. hit a trigger, and then make our way back to grab the feather, which successfully skips the wave fight. I, that is I so much more difficult. Yeah, that's and so much harder. <laughs> how often do you, how often do you just get the hole in one like that? Like, uh, good question. No, okay. I mean he's really, <laughs> he's really good. Time. Yeah, that was really good. Yeah. Yeah. It's really good, but for average people like us, it, it looked <laughs> yeah, really good. <laughs> so he yeah. picked up the feather, and now he needs to start the next wave fight, which is faster to just save but do it from the start, um, and then go around some more invisible walls. Uh, we have some mods that we can use to visualize some of these walls and triggers, and it's a very wild. All right, so we're so, changing something here. Uh, right here, uh, if you watched the Borderlands 2 co-op all quest run from AGDQ 2019, you might remember the runners being super duper nervous about this cutscene crashing. Uh, since then, we have learned that if you have an RTX card and watch this cutscene on anything higher than 30 FPS, you have a very large chance of crashing, which I say very large, which makes it surprising that all three runners didn't crash. We were all running uncapped frame rate. So, and those PCs had like 2080s in them or something. Like yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's, it's a miracle that none of them crashed yeah. in hindsight. So before the cutscene, I played a quest, uh, which, was, which skipped the dialogue after the cutscene and allowed us to uh, save quit here, which spawns Bloodwing right away uh, so that we don't have to wait for Bloodwing to like kind of taunt us um, before damaging her. So what we're going to do instead is actually kill her from outside of the arena. We're going around yet again, yet another invisible wall. Please. Like, there are three different invisible walls that he's gone around for three different things. This boss is actually surviving. No. They're forced to survive. Oh, OK. Uh, yeah, <laughs> Bloodwing has a failsafe where she doesn't drop below 1 HP for any phase. Oh, oh, multiple phases. Okay, yeah, gotcha. yeah, yeah. So cool. That's the Bloodwing fight. <laughs> another boss, which didn't take too long. Uh, and then from here, more dialogue skips. We're going to steal her color and just leave her there. Yep. She's fine. She's fine. Nothing happens. <laughs> and that was wildlife. That actually went, that went very yeah, that well. That went incredibly well.
Uh, so we just stole Bloodwing's collar, and we need to give it to our good old friend Claptrap. Uh, at this point in the story, we're trying to get uh, three different items to cross three different hurdles so that we can make our way to the vault key. Um, so at this point, uh, we're going to grab more quests for more dialogue skips and then uh, make our way to Thousand Cuts so that we can get the uh, second bar or get past the second barricade. Which, Thousand Cuts, uh, I have a love-hate relationship with because the triggers in this map are incredibly tiny. It, there, there's another reason. Um, <laughs> if you get shot, uh, you actually take a very small bit of knockback, and that oh. means you cannot jump. So... <laughs> If we get shot at any point in time, it makes progressing through the rest of the map a lot more difficult. Even if the shield absorbs the bullet, it still gives you the knockback. Mm. Yeah. Um, so, but yeah, at this point, it's really just a way fight. So now would be a good time for some donations. Awesome. Thank you so much. We have plenty coming in for that incentive. We have $104 from Zabogo that says, <laughs> Thank you, Borderlands community and friends, for making me feel so welcome at my first live GDQ. 104 train. Yeah. We have time for another? Yeah, one yep. more. Yeah. All right, awesome. Well, we have another 104 from yep. Derek MK. <laughs> yep. That says, greetings from the audience. Absolutely legendary run. Borderlands 2 is always great to see at GDQ, and it's pretty special to me since some of the older runs introduced me to Amarillan, Shockwave, FC, some of the nicest guys at GDQ. This donation is going to the Tina DLC run, which we're making amazing progress on. So please keep those donations coming for that incentive. So, what you want. so I hope you guys like that cutscene. Yeah, Brick um, flashbangs us and <laughs> we don't get to see the cutscene. <laughs> uh, we save quite after the fight uh, to skip some dialogue right afterwards. And as we're spawning back in the, uh, the fight, it, you're in a blue tunnel, and it's still playing that blue tunnel. So what Decept did after spawning in, which he spawned in even after a safe quit, you get teleported right to the arena. What he did after spawning in is what we call a sequence skip. Um, he plays echoes and quests in a very specific order to transfer the really high priority of the quest onto the echolog. And it, it's also the reason why we use Maya's echolog. Uh, it is one un un uninterrupted line of dialogue. So that really high quest priority is now on that one line of dialogue. Um, so everything that's... <laughs> Every dialogue line that happened after playing that echo was skipped using that. Um, it's just one of the other ways that we can skip dialogue really, really easily. Day two on Pandora. Day two on Pandora. Day two on Pandora. Yeah, there's a lot of really cool things happening here, which is overshadowed by the fact that this is just an escort quest where yeah. we have to drag Brick to the end of it. Uh, and Brick is slow and is, likes to take his time and fight enemies. Yep. So after every wave of the escort quest, we save quit to progress him a little bit further. Yep. But yeah, that's really just the rest of this map, so uh, we have some time for more donations. Awesome. Thank you so much. We have $10 from Utsu that Dude. says, <laughs> Hey, Decept! Utsu here. So proud to see you running a GDQ. Knew you could do it. I knew you wouldn't slip the snail. <laughs> and I'm sure y'all know what that means, even though I don't. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, so again, Thousand Cuts uh, Collision is horrendous. It's good to not be here any longer than we have to. You can continue with donations. All right, thank you. We have $300 from Exadragon that says, oh. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much for that. It says, had to donate during my absolute favorite game. Let's get that Tina DLC unlocked. We're so close, too. Absolutely, yeah. we are so close. You all can do it. All right, we've got, for more. Go. We got more. Okay, We're still less okay. We're still <laughs> <laughs> It's been so dense so yeah. far. I'm just, you know, I want to make sure I'm good. We've yep. got one hundred dollars from Sleepy Time thirty five seventy eight saying, "So excited to see Deceptics in person at SGDQ. Let's go, Geared Tina DLC." Absolutely. That loader did not fall over. It's fine. Brick did the job for us. All right, thank you, Brick. <laughs> Thank you, Brick. So uh, right at the end of this level, we're actually going to save quit, which uh, might not seem like it's faster because we're actually right next to the fast travel. Uh, but it refreshes Gunzerk so that we could use it uh, in Sanctuary right here for some extra movements. Again, Sanctuary is really just picking up quests. That's really the only reason we're here. We come here and we slam E on a bunch of people and we leave. Yep. So we're, doing, we're going to go to Opportunity next to get the last part of the three-part mission to, to progress. Um, Opportunity is a fast map in normal speedruns, and in geared, it's even faster. 
So it's going to... Nice. Wow. That's really hard. Wow. Yeah. Is there like a... Is there, is there a speed cap with these boosts? Uh, there is. While you're in the air, you're capped at uh, 4,000 units. And for reference, if you are sprinting, uh, you run at about uh, 597. So it's actually very difficult to hit said speed cap, but it is existent. It do you, exist. Are we hitting that often in the run? Uh, or not in this one. No. Um, it's more prevalent in co-op runs. Okay. There's a glitch where you can run at the speed of sound. Speed of sound, yeah. So there's a lot of dialogue skipping going on here. Um, he's using, again, the echo priority bug. Sequence skipping. Sequence skipping. <laughs> uh, it's a very conveniently placed quest. Using the echoes off of that. And, and that's the end of opportunity, right? That's there. the end of opportunity. Yep. <laughs> yep. Very, very quick map. Put in the watch, wait, and then leave. Very difficult movement, which very happy that I hit. So we're going to pick up this pocket watch. There we go. And then save it. Yep, that's opportunity. It's, again, really, really fast, really, really precise. Getting all the kills and everything is, is pretty difficult. So now that we have all three, pe all three of our pieces to uh, find out or get to the vault key, um, we need to say hi to our, our good friend again, if you, uh, good friend Claptrap, um, which, if you remember in the early game, helped us so much when it came to moving slow and just being slow in general. Um, so we need, to, we need his help again. Uh, so we're just going to go say hi to him and then, and then leave. Don't worry about it. Hold there's down. a big, there's a big death barrier, uh, a laser beam grid, that will kill you if you walk through it. Uh, so we need Claptrap to disable it for us. Yep. Um, and he's going to do a great job. He's going to disable the barrier real well. Um, it's a very, very useful return field. Yeah. It's yeah. It it, it really uh it really keeps us from from uh getting past it. It, you know, it does kill you if you touch it. It, it, it That's does. not a joke. It does kill you, um, but they didn't really, they didn't place it well, so we could just uh, jump past it. <laughs> <laughs> and that is very, very easy to get around. Yep. Yeah. You just need a single grenade to get around it. Um, but we can't move ahead too quick because our good friend Claptrap uh, really likes to move slow. Uh, if we move too quick here, uh, it'll actually break his AI, and it, won't, it will not allow us to progress. So um, we have to wait till specific points to do a lot of the killing here. I would really like to fight my sham back before I start shooting myself in the foot. No? Corrosive dot? We're going to... OK, cool. Thank you. <laughs> so, you saw the swap back to the Pimpernel. Um, the Norfleets are really good for AOE damage and clearing a whole bunch of waves, but coming up is a lot more targeted damage, which the Norfleet is better at killing one specific enemy really quickly. Uh, and there's going to be a lot of that in this upcoming area. Yeah. And right here with this that dies immediately. That dies immediately, yeah. That's supposed to be really hard. It, it was very difficult. He yeah. landed. I had to actually look where he landed instead of anywhere else. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, yeah, now we're off to the bunker, which uh, there hasn't really been much RNG throughout this entire run. But um, the next two maps actually have all of it condensed into those two areas. Um, we, right now, we have to destroy 11 autocannons. Uh, and while they do have set spawns, the spawn pattern is always random. Um, and in this run, it's not really a big issue, but uh, it can be quite difficult depending on where things are. Yeah, this is a really good area map to see, like how the Norfleet rockets go. Um, you know, if you if you shoot a Norfleet, they tend to just wander all over the place, uh, and that's why he's using the Pimpernel because he's using it. I promise. Yeah, it's it's <laughs> a lot more targeted. Sometimes your gun goes away. It, it, it's fun. He does. <laughs> yeah. I feel like any time I ever tune into a borderline speedrun stream, it is like always on this level. Well, this is yeah. like this is a solid like ten minutes. Yeah, I'm sure <laughs> yeah. <I'd say. laughs> yeah. Not of this category, but of of most. Just categories. about every category, right? The, you're a viewer and you're watching and you're like, what is happening? And uh, nope, that's just normal. You're like, oh, oh. we're in control for Angel. Again. I was gonna say, imagine you probably weren't concerned about that because you could just one tap anything. Yeah, yeah. I, I was okay. Yeah. I was definitely fine. All right. So, uh, I'm actually going to get... That's a really good pattern. It was a really, really good pattern, yeah. Um, so at the end of this fight, I'm going to use some dialogue skips to uh, skip some of Brick's lines, and then I'm going to equip some very specific gear and look in a very specific spot. Right, so we'll explain this after, after yes. he gets it. Because the precision on this is really, really high. So this is the bunker. Yeah. Um, it's not a place. Okay, here we go. Cross your fingers. The bunker. Meet the BNK 
Nice. 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 So the bunker fight usually consists of uh, multiple, like, like the bunker like perches, and then you can do damage to the bunker, and then the bunker flies away. You can do more damage. Uh, but if you line up in a very specific spot right as the uh, cutscene ends, uh, and then shoot at a very specific time, you can actually clear the bunker's health before the bunker perches. And that is what we call zero cycle. Yeah. I do not know why I used an echo here, but that is fine. fine. Um, the precision on that is so high. It's so high, and it's yeah. very RNG. Yeah. Because this is only positive. We haven't really talked much about elements, um, but one of the elements that the Pimpernel is is slag. And in this playthrough, it gives a three times bonus to the damage you do. So that, that kill only works if you slag the bunker. So it is a percent chance. Uh, if we slag the bunker, and it only works if we slag. So we got really lucky that we slagged him, and just have had the perfect fight up. So we won't cycle the bunker. Zero cycle. Zero cycle. Zero cycle. Zero cycle. Zero cycle. <laughs> so there's an elevator, but elevators are slow. Uh, Salvador falling down an elevator is faster. <laughs> so instead, of we're just going to go on the outside and fall all the way to the bottom, where uh -huh. there's this convenient hole that you can just get back in. And then we hit the trigger down here, yep. and off to control core. I am very happy I hit zero cycle, by the way. Yeah, only. that was, <laughs> even in like practice, that was, that was yep. hard for me to hit. Yep. Uh, and now we're off to Control Core Angel, which uh, is honestly a pretty sad map. Um, this run has been pretty fast-paced, and it all kind of slows down right here yep. uh, because this is a four-minute long wave fight. Oof. You love to see it. Yeah. I, uh, I, I very famously, it's still, this is still. We open. have a bounty for this. I have you? a bounty out for this. How long has it been out? Six years? Seven years? Uh, something like that. Um, if, if, and we've tried. But if, if anyone can find a way to skip any of these injectors, then you, you will win money. <laughs> Just, this is, it's so boring. Everything <laughs> Horrendously boring. Do this, yeah. it is. I feel like no every just like this. really good run yeah. has to have yep. one section like this, right? Up. Well, do we have some time for some words from the, the Borderlands community? Uh, yep. Real quick, one more thing. Uh, so you might notice me using the Pimpernel to shoot the injectors. They aren't taking damage, uh, but what we are doing is uh, taking advantage of one of Salvador's skills called Get Some. If you shoot an enemy with a projectile, so this doesn't work with rocket launchers, um, then you can actually uh, start refilling your Gunzerk faster. Um, even if you have Gunzerk out, you can still uh, regen your um, cooldown. But yes, we do have time for a donation. Wonderful. We have $25 from Bevo that says, it's way past my bedtime, mm -hmm. but totally worth it to catch a Deceptics BL2 run live and support a great cause. Let's get another sub 56, winky face. And we are less than $1,000 away from that Tina DLC run, so keep those donations coming. It, this is like you four can, minutes. It's gonna keep going. There's, there's really nothing to talk about here. Uh, right. One, one thing. thing. One thing. Oh. So uh, right here, um, we're actually gonna destroy the injector. And uh, while Roland is on his feet, he will always follow the host player. So what we're gonna do here is actually kind of line ourselves up where he needs to be. Did, I, okay, things did die. Um, we're gonna line up where he needs to be so that uh, after we finish clearing the map, uh, he's in the correct spot. And that's pretty much the only way we can speed up this area. Yep. Are we good? Yep. <laughs> yeah, we're good. That's okay. It. We have $250 from the Phantom Zone saying, oh. <laughs> donating for Doctors Without Borders and to buy Claptrap some pizzas for his birthday. <laughs> Hopefully I don't order too many. We still got another like two yeah, minutes. You can keep going. There's so <laughs> much to do. Three, four. Even. Well, then when I you see the shield in the center disappear, that's when we're at the end. <laughs> okay, sounds great. We've got fifty dollars from Gage that says, "Go to Seth, go. You can do it, buddy. We're all here rooting for you, heart." Thanks, Gage. We have twenty-five dollars from Edward saying, "I would love to see the Ocarina of Time beta showcase." Two hundred twenty-five thousand for bonus game seven is a big target, but with a donation from everyone watching, we can hit that. No sweat. I like that attitude. Absolutely. And we have one thousand dollars from Algy <laughs> saying, "This is fun." Let's have some more fun. And I completely agree. We're just at about, uh, oh, as I'm speaking, it's going up. Less than $400 away from that incentive. Yeah, and trust me, you, you do want to see the DLC run. It's really, really sick. There's a lot of tech in it. Even, even more than this run. It just kind of amplifies all the tech in this run. Yeah. To an even higher degree. 
And one more special one. We have $5 from Gecko822 that says, from the team at Gearbox, so happy to see our game at SGDQ. Good luck, Deceptics. Yeah. Thank you, Gearbox, for making this game. It's really good. Every game in the series? Yeah. It, most so, of us run every single game in the series just because it's a phenomenal series. Yeah. yeah. So here we are, the, the thankfully, last enemy in this area. Uh, hopefully, she doesn't get a ammo. All right, cool. Okay, cool. Fast Lilith. Did you guys ever find a way to manipulate that, or is it just random? It is just random. Okay. All right, so we're doing some, uh, we're doing some goofs, doing some gas here. Uh, if we despawn Roland, then he's just oh. outside the map. Hello, Roland. And then we can turn in the quest here. <laughs> he's not supposed to be there? No. Oh. Would you normally have to go back to Sanctuary for that? No. Or? So if you stand where an NPC is about to spawn, it despawns oh, them. Okay. And right. that platform is where the NPCs yeah. spawn before they get teleported in the That's area. That's their safe zone. So we, we scared him. So, yep. so we save cut to skip cutscene. Uh, Roland is just chilling with Angel. Yep. Yeah, nothing, nothing happened. Uh, and then we run into that specific corner of Marcus's shop, which hits the fast travel in the center of town. Uh, skips an intro cutscene of Marcus. Um, yes, this is in like the third playthrough of the game, but you still need to know who Marcus is. Um, so by running where we did and stay quitting, it'll skip that. And then Iridium Blight is unfortunately one of those really big maps where nine times out of 10, we will be using a vehicle to move around. I know, boring, sorry. Um, but yeah, we need to get the- technical because it's faster. Yes. For some reason, the catapult technical is faster than any other car in the game. So the extra menuing that it takes to get to the car is way worth it. Is it faster than the Scarlet? Car? I'm not sure. I don't. Yeah. It's a very good question, actually. It's fastest in base. It's the fastest base. Game. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So from here, uh, we actually picked up some quests from the bounty board. Did we hit it? Oh, yeah, we I got was it. Gonna <laughs> say, real quick, we yeah. need that incentive. So thank you so much to everyone nice. who participated in that drive. That was amazing. And this run has been incredible. And I know you all are excited to see more. So thank yeah. you so much. Trust me, it's, it's really cool. Yeah. So this is Sawtooth Cauldron that we're going to. We hit the trigger, uh, we skip some dialogue, and we can travel directly to Sawtooth Cauldron. Um, it's one of the more difficult maps. One of the maps of the Nine. game. OK. <laughs> Sorry. Um, in just about every category in the series, uh, or in the game. Okay. Getting shot means you're in the air. <laughs> Had to happen once. So this is really difficult in an any percent run because the enemies are hard. And this is really difficult in a geared run for a different reason, uh, because all the collision is terrible. So we got to kill four ambush commanders here. Again, it, not difficult. Um, they have an average amount of health, and the North Fleets do a gazillion damage. So they're all dead. Uh, but now we have to get up this slope, which oh, has this great fun. collision. This looks fun. Yes, it is totally fair. normal. Yep. Yep. And that conveyor belt really likes to get in the way. And yeah, there we go. Okay. <laughs> first try? First try? Yep. Yeah. Uh, and then normally we're supposed to actually run down a little bit further here. Um, but if we stand at a very specific spot and jump, we can hit a one pixel big trigger right there. And then that, traverse here. Yeah, in, yeah. The, in the collision view, it's just there. Like yeah. we, we can just, just see it. A little circle. Yep. It is just sitting very in the middle circle. of the street. It makes yep. zero sense, but we can hit it and hit the trigger. That's great. And then uh, after uh, destroying Boombringer, uh, we save quit, which skips dialogue, and then waiting for the elevator to go down the, as you can see, very tall elevator shaft. Um, we're going to enter back through said elevator shaft, and then actually activate the ele elevator through the backside. And then just get on top of it. Nice. We are the elevator now. Yes. We do a little elevator surfing. Yeah. Um, one very specific thing I'm going to do is actually like push myself up against this invisible wall that's supposed to keep you in the elevator, but it didn't really do a good job. <laughs> um, but that allows these enemies to spawn right here. And then the buzzards, will, that is not the right one. Uh, the buzzards will also spawn. Um, the Pimpernel, as you might expect, takes good care of all of them. Yeah, again, it's way more accurate than the Norfleet. Uh, having the Pimpernel out means he's not going to have a problem hitting them. And then more dialogue skips. Uh, we need to bring these crates back to the bridge that we were, please stay, okay. <laughs> that we were just at. Uh, and the buzzards that come pick up these crates uh, actually come at different times. So we hit them in a very specific order. OK, you're supposed to do that. All yes. right. yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah we're good. We're good. We're good. We're good. Uh, Every single time you were damage boosting back and forth, I was just holding my breath. It's, yeah. it's an optional objective to jump off, and Brick is really proud of you for doing it. But yeah, we hit them in a specific order so that this goes faster and allows us to travel out. 
honestly, not too bad of a sausage. Yeah, that was a really good sausage. Not too bad. Yeah. So we're gonna do. Okay. Okay. Oh, I tried. I. You know why? Why not go for it? Yeah. Oh, I'm assuming you can drive up that. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Right. Yes. It's it really yeah. difficult. The yeah. the cars in this game will bonk on everything. Everything. Yeah. Trust me. I think that's what's most impressive to me watching you just rocket boost everywhere. Is I know like just how. I, uh, I, I feel like the movement in this game has always felt like like sticky, you know, if that makes sense. Yeah. I don't know, like or at least at least, at least the ground collision when you're running or something like that. So watching you like just kind of elegantly navigate through all this. <laughs> yeah. So it's kind of the opposite of like you know co-op runs where Axton wants to be on the ground at all times. Right. So wants right. to be in the air at all times. That is not the right type of car. All right, we got it. Oop. Okay. First try. <laughs> First try. <laughs> so we're gonna go uh, hit the ladder on this pipe here. Uh, there's slag pools in this area, which can do kind of a funny glitch where you perma slag yourself uh, if you get out of a car while slagged. But it's, it's okay. We can we can survive. Yeah, your shame. It goes away on a safe quit. So. Your shame's gonna absorb everything, right? Yeah. Right, right. You've seen it work the entire run, right? So we're gonna do a little-known feature of the car station here, where we spawn two cars uh, and go over to this first pump station, where we're gonna activate the valves. And one of the things that the car stations allow you to do is teleport to any car. So instead of like driving back over or wasting time mm. rocket jumping over, we just oh, that's cool. teleport back to the car. Like that. Yep. Uh, and we pretty hit the elevator here, so we don't have to wait for it. That's also a big thing about this strat. It's not used as much in solo. Uh, it's like the one time that it is used, but it's Actually, used a lot more in. You can do it in solo, and it saves like maybe half a second. So it's also a lot harder than just driving. <laughs> so. Um, but Pump Station 2 is underground, so a safe good hero put us back at the start, which is a lot closer to Pump Station 3. This is one of my favorite jumps that I've seen recently. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Dude, oh, nice. this is oh. sick. So that, that, so that bridge actually doesn't have collision to the player, but we can still shoot rockets against it to give us a boost. That's one of the things I've observed is a lot of the collision you go through, you can still shoot with rockets. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's yeah. quite perfect for this. So now we're going to get a car and... Uh, and we're gonna, we're gonna hit the pipe. Yep. We need to hit the pipe to destroy it. Don't worry, we are hitting the pipe. I repeat. Hitting the pipe with the car. <laughs> uh, the saw blade technical moves slower than the, uh, than the barrel technical, uh, but it actually has a larger hitbox than it's supposed to, so we can just hit the pipe without hitting the pipe. It makes sense, trust me. Yep. So, this is uh, some map. Aerodexus. Aerodexus something. Bad Again, list. I forget the, I forget <laughs> the third word. It's the, the starting map in Borderlands 1 Yeah, that has been taken over by Apiary. Uh, so we do have to hit this elevator trigger, otherwise we could just stay at the beginning of the Ooh. 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 That was tight. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm clapping for that, yeah. I'm yeah. clapping for that. Uh, otherwise we could just like stay at the beginning of the map, but we do have to hit that elevator, come over here, and plug a bunch of things into the console. A lot of the uh, kind of middle parts of this run are just hurry up and wait. Right, man. <laughs> yep. uh, doing it that fast, dialogue just kind of overwrites itself over and over and over again. It's yeah. Really interesting. And, to listen to. Yeah, now we are in Sanctuary for the final time. Uh, and we have to say hello to our good friend once again, uh, good old Claptrap, who is going to help speed up. The, yeah, you, yeah, speed up the run, definitely. You guys really like Claptrap. We love Claptrap. He's, I, it's I so fun. Every time Claptrap like Clap on the screen, it's, you're just like, oh my god, I'm so happy. It's yeah, actually no, really it funny. He slows us down so much in Borderlands 2, yet he's the fastest speedrun character in the pre-sequel. Yep. <laughs> he made up for himself. He has the funniest glitch. <laughs> yep. Uh, now we're back in Iridium Blight, but this time we are not going to use a vehicle because we are the perfect number of rocket jumps away. Uh, so if I can hit this movement correctly, we will end with... Zero rockets at the end. Nice. 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 Talk to Claptrap. Save quit. Thank you. Uh, Did you find it because of segmented? Uh, yes. Oh, I bet the segmented run of this is gnarly. Yeah. And uh, it's been, It's actually it, very outdated, but... <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. And it was only made eight months ago? Seven months? Yes, and it is already... It's already very outdated. outdated. Like, that's yeah. not that long ago. No, it is. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this app has got very good at this game in a very short amount of time. It is incredibly impressive. Yeah. So we're at the final wave fight in the game. Uh, Claptrap will, you know, say funny things to us, and then uh, he'll help us get through the door. He's gonna you know, because we can't. He's, he's we can't yeah, so good. This is such a big door. We can't go over it. Yeah. Why are we dropping and picking up the weapons again? 
cancels that, and Gunzerker. Gunzerker okay. Because um, yeah. right up, now I don't need it, yeah. and so it's cooling down now. Down. Yes. Yep. So we have it when I actually need it. And he picks up his weapons in a certain order. Um, sometimes if you're playing casually and you try and drop a weapon, it'll drop one, mm. but it'll try to pull out one that you're already holding. Mm. So it kind of like glitches out. But he picks them up in a certain way that he can just drop them. There's a small side effect where like, I mean, it's, it's pretty huge in other runs, but whenever a gun is on the map or in your backpack, it has a full mag. Uh, so dropping and picking up is a really cool way to reload them. But he's got a bunch of uh, things that kind of skip reloads. So. so I figure during this, we yeah. do a few community shoutouts yeah. during this. Oh, yeah. Well, community shoutouts. So, uh, yeah, uh, when it came to actually like routing out this category, making it what it is today, um, Zubies and BGM were two of like the huge uh, known people. Uh, Dark Smoke uh, is another just amazing runner uh, in literally every category. <laughs> no matter what category he touches, he's record the amazing. Day. Yeah. yeah. Um, some other people, Unjust Action, my uh, my co-op partner for any percent runs, really cool dude. Um, has really uh, helped me want to continue playing this game, um, along with Zizi, who's actually on the couch behind me. Yeah, the three of you do a uh, co-op quest, right? Yes. yes. Yeah. It is a very, very fun, fun run, and for the reason that we're both here today. Yeah. <laughs> we were the, the only active runners at the time, and we just kind of hopped in each other's chats, and we're like, yo, do you want to learn the co-op quest run? And it's such a fun run. Yeah. It's perfect it's, moment of silence. Thank, <laughs> thank you, Claptrap. Um, but yeah, some others, uh, Mopioid, just Jolt's dude, just a bunch of people who have actually just brought this community together, uh, really just um, put speedrunning in the casual mindset, uh, which is just really, really cool. Yeah, Jolt was helping with the uh, segmented run, right? Yeah. 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 Uh, so, uh, Claptrap has been spending the entire time trying to get us to... to we're trying to open the door. Uh, we can just go over it. Of course. Yep. Yeah. As you do. <laughs> the, um, uh, he's the, main trying, quest okay. of, he's the main quest of Borderlands 2 is like super tightly coded to the point where the only way we found to break it like hard locks the game. Yep. Uh, but there's a world in which they didn't code it that well and we could just get to the end of the game right here, like save 15 minutes. But. So yeah, even though I can travel out here, uh, we have to wait for a claptrap to open the door. Yes, just gonna just gonna wait for him to <laughs> open it for us. You know, he's trying. Yeah, he's doing his best. Trying his hardest. So, this upcoming map was like one of the OG maps for showing that you were good at geared Salvador movement. Uh, this this is, was my first exposure. Yeah, to this. this is one of the tightest maps in the entire uh, in the entire run. There's enemies all around that you can bonk on. There's this barge right here that used to be bad. Oh, and you just proc on top. I love that. I love that. That's cycle based, isn't it? Uh, sort of. He's gonna reload right here, which will nice. Got it right there. He's gonna jump over the wall. Rocket boost off there. Rocket boost over an invisible wall here. Whoa. Nice, made it. That was close. And then he's gonna go from here directly into the end. There he is. Wow. <laughs> Ain't no way. Yeah, we have a uh, we have a category extensions leaderboard, and Heroes Pass is one of the most highly contested uh, movement challenges that we have. And then we have one massive jump. Uh, you're supposed to go all the way around down an elevator, but you can just At jump the all the way to the to the arena. <laughs> yep. So this is a really fitting way to end the run, huh? Yeah, 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 with so two of the longest cutscenes and two boss fights. Okay, I was talking about the movement <laughs> and the cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, yeah, no. Yeah. The movement is sick. The but movement is. Unfortunately, nice. now we have to do boss fights. Yeah, you know, uh, boss fights. <laughs> Something that characterizes this series and this run just makes a mockery of all of them. <laughs> yeah. All right, so there's Jack. There's Jack. There was Jack. He is dead. He had a decent amount of health, considering, I feel like. Yeah, we missed the uh, Pimper Fleet. The, cut, so. the cutscene's so long that you lose your Gunzerker duration. <laughs> so... Yep. You could just you could just have to use one weapon. You and this cutscene is long enough to regen Gunzerk. So, yeah, all these are rendered in world actually. So, uh, you can like throw grenades and, and turrets and stuff in the background and make it look really funny. I can't even believe it's been like an hour already. Like yeah. it, I've been. Yeah, we've been flying. I've just been kind of mesmerized the whole time. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Be between like the like like the save quits and the and like the the teleporting and the rockets and everything. I mean, I'm surprised the game even keeps up. It's with, like what y'all are doing half the time. Run. Yeah. It's, yeah. Yeah. 
Well, and then so I'm like, oh, we're here. All we right. mentioned way back at the beginning that we don't use the uh, the New Game Plus mechanic, and that's because it actually actively crashes the game if we have too much of it. <laughs> so there's the final boss. Uh, wow. You might notice his health is gone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's not much to say about the warrior. He just kind of dies. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, like the bunker, even though we can deplete their health uh, before or like instantly, uh, we do have to wait for them to go to what's called death cycle. So while we do that, uh, I'm going to hit a fast travel um, because uh, if we can get a check mark at a certain point, um, which is completely RNG, uh, instead of spawning at the area travel way back there, we'll spawn at the fast travel here. So we'll see how this goes. All right, one more dialogue skip. And we got it. We go. Yeah, nice. RNG, let's go. RNG. <laughs> So exactly we spawn here, and we make our way back to Jack, who we're going to give a, uh, a nice high five. So and then... Uh, and then... Please, time. time. <laughs> that seemed really fast. It was really fast. That was really, really fast. Really fast. What was the real time on that? Uh, 103, basically. 103. Yeah, yeah. It looked like a 102, like 57 when he said time. That was yeah. a record, like... Eight months ago? Yes. Oh, I was like, like that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I was like, that was... Yeah. No. Yes. Yeah. Um, but yeah, if you want to learn this run, come to the Borderlands speedrunning Discord. Uh, we will answer all of your questions. I think we're going to... I think someone is going to make a good tutorial soon. Yeah, I'm working, I'm, okay. working I'm working on it. I'm working on it. I'm glad to answer I can imagine it's really easy to make a tutorial about a mm. category like this. Oh, yeah, really no, it's super easy. easy. Yeah. There's, like, no <laughs> nuances or anything that could occur. Yeah. <laughs> But, All right, Geared Tina yes. time, huh? Geared Tina? Yeah, Geared Tina time. Absolutely. Do we need to watch this? I was about to say, yeah. no, we can just, no, <laughs> we can just get right on rolling to the cool, fast stuff. All yeah? right. Good, so, good stuff on that run, to step. Good stuff, thank you, dude. Thank you, thank so, you. So wait, just let us know when we're set up and we can. Yeah. We good? All right. Uh, hang on. You got to reset. So, oh. You can, you you can, can talk you about can the other. Oh, okay. So um, one thing you might notice about my gear setup here is that there's actually no North Fleets. Um, this DLC has zero wave fights, which means that we don't need to worry about uh, clearing large sets of mobs. Nice. Um, we do have a couple other pieces of gear. Again, when we use them, I will talk about them. Uh, skill tree, same thing. Badass rank, yes. Uh, so one thing of note, uh, this will be starting after the intro cutscene uh, because it is very long and very annoying to, to look through while you are... Uh, Start. Oh, yeah, it's tired. Yeah. Start. Start. <laughs> yes. Very prepared for that. You get close to the entrance to Flame Rock Refuge. Right. But so, suddenly... Save quit after the health bar shows up, skip some dialogue, and then spawns in uh, Bony Pants. The, the best... <laughs> One of the best <laughs> named NPCs. The best Mr. named enemy in this Bony game. Pants. Mr. Bony Pants guy. guy. So, the... Uh, there you go, he's in. We're... Now we're now we're doing is uh, pimper habbing because we're using an Ahab, uh, and again it's going to do just a, a truly ridiculous amount of damage. Um, we use the Norfleet because that's what we're using anyway yeah. for any percent runs, but the Ahab is technically a lot more damage, so we're using that instead. Um, it's slightly less damage than a different gun, but it uses explosive damage instead of uh, elemental damage. Yeah, which will actually uh, come into play yes. at a certain point. We just we don't need as much AOE. For this. Yeah. So uh, if you remember about echo skipping during the main game, well, I mean, I would expect it because it's probably stuck in your head. Uh, we actually use a different echo at this point um, because in DLCs, dialogue skipping works a little different. Um, the echo that we have skips between two different talkers back to back, back just over and over and over again. Uh, and every time it does this, it'll skip a dialogue line. Uh, so we're going to play them at certain points so that it continuously skips the dialogue uh, to where we need. So we're using Zero's Echo Log this time instead of Maya's. Because well, Zero's switches the most. Uh, so there's a gate blocking the next map. Um, it's not very tall, so we can just jump over it. <laughs> it's really that easy, all right? Yes, it is. It, it's not quite that easy. They, it's a little higher than it seems. It, mm. You can just kind of... Just go. a regular grenade jump isn't too much. Um, so this is so, behind the travel. Yep. You're not supposed to be here, but... You can just walk right past it. Um, so it gives you a good angle to, to destroy these ships. Yep. And then a safe quit here won't put us back at that area travel because we technically aren't supposed to be there yet. So we're back at the fast travel, but that is actually where we need to be for the next objective. I'm going to open Moxie's bar here, go in, tavern, talk to her, then talk to this guy, and then punch gonna, him. We don't talk to him. We just punch him. That's, that's how we interact with oh, people. Sorry, I forgot. <laughs> My bad. Uh, oh. 
And then a double save foot after punching the uh, bar patron uh, makes him move right away so that when we catch up to him right here, uh, we can just punch him again for him to uh, explode. This is the Borderlands series. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is like Tina. So this concept has been explored a lot recently, but this is Tina running a D&D &D campaign. Oh, okay. There was the one-shot Tiny Tina's DLC game, and then there was Wonderlands, which is like a more expanded version of that. The one shot is essentially just this DLC in a standalone game. Yeah. Um, and it tweaked a little bit to, to constitute it being a standalone game. Yeah. Uh, but Wonderlands was just released as a brand new campaign, brand new characters. So you notice that uh, the. Uh, I'm well, objective here. markers yeah, yeah, yeah. are uh, <laughs> behind Deceptics. And that's because he's moving so fast that they cannot keep up with him. Uh, but as he goes past them, he's hitting them. My favorite boost, though, there's just like ground skins that you do. Just like staying close to the like floor. When you're like three oh, so feet nice. over and you just keep you keep going for like three, four hundred yeah. feet. Uh, yeah. okay. I personally really like the the ones where you jump off a wall. You jump up to yep. a wall and then you jump off the wall. Yeah, the, 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 the air Texas one. That one. Yeah, the, yeah, that's sick. Um, I swear I can get over that wall. How long did it take y'all to determine like what were like the optimal guns? You know, or a like, long time. Uh, it's actually changed a lot recently. Um, just like, it, there's not even like an optimal set. Like different runners use different things depending on what they're comfortable with. So the standard setup is the bottom booms and the north fleets, but there's been more tinkering with what parts are on that weapon, and we haven't gotten too much into it um, this run because it's not as important. But right. different runners use different parts on those weapons for different purposes. I would imagine, I mean, you know, there's. Yeah, obviously, like, Borderlands always touted as, like, having, like, millions and millions of different yeah. kinds of... Yeah, so you have a lot of options you can work with. That might yeah. have to be really hard. So just like in base game, uh, if we um, get to certain objectives... Uh, this load screen is... Oh, okay. Uh, if you get to certain objectives um, and then save quit, it'll unlock the fast travel in the next area, which skips a door opening and actually puts us a little further in this map. More do you look different. <laughs> well, they keep playing that echo. Dude's just screaming. That's just no, Salvador. That's just Salvador. That's no, that's just Salvador. Salvador. Yeah, oh, yeah. when guns okay, are I thought that was an echo screaming. the whole time. <laughs> no, that is just Salvador. Yep. It's normal stuff. He's so cute. Give me on the floor. Uh, okay, that's fine. All right, you can't open the menu if you're in the air. That's one of the things that we failed to mention, but yeah. We have time for a donation in here? Yes. Awesome. We have $25 from Snooze and Loopy that says, Hello to Seb, Amy, Zizi, and Bryo. Awesome to see so many familiar faces on commentary. Borderlands 2 is still one of my favorite games to date, and I'm excited to see geared UVHM being run at GDQ. Here's to $25 towards the incentive, and best of luck on the rest of the run. And thank you for donating towards that. This has been so fun to watch so far. All right, Zizi, your turn. I explain this. Um, so, uh, the... What Decept did before the cutscene is he completely emptied out the, the mag of his Ahab. Uh, Salvador has a skill called Money Shot, which is essentially just more damage on the last bullet of your weapon. And Salvador, the whole concept of Salvador is that he's just a glitch in and of itself that affects transfer to different weapons. So because his Ahab has zero bullets in it, his left hand, his Pimpernel, just continually has that money shot bonus. Mm. So you're going to see throughout the entirety of this run, um, he's going to, at certain points, completely empty out his Ahab uh, so that it always has the money shot bonus so that it does a ton, a ton of damage to the enemies we need to get. So yeah, not only do we have the Pimper, pimper Hab damage, uh, we also have money shot applied to that as well, so it gets kind of a, as it gets you might ridiculous. expect, ridiculous, yes. Yeah. Salvador has a lot wrong with <laughs> Gun zerking As you might expect, holding two guns is kind of hard to, uh, to code correctly. Yeah. yeah. And this isn't even... Uh, Salvador has a, a deputy build. Whoa! Wow. <laughs> that was sick. Salvador also has the amp shield glitch. But, yeah. You know. it, he's a deputy build where you take a really high crit damage weapon and hold it in one hand, and that crit damage gets applied to your other hand. It, it is incredibly, incredibly broken. Yeah. Which is why we're using him for the run. That was great. Good character. So unfortunately, right here, we actually cannot skip the dialogue, so we have to sit through it. Um, and then the next boss fight coming up is the Four Kings, um, which are very easy to uh, actually softlock. If you kill them before they fully have their spawn animation, they will just sit there and sit there, and so you get the point. Um, so we're actually going to wait before shooting them to actually um, damage them. So you're going to see him melee a lot? 
to uh, during the course of this fight. It's a really long fight, and we want this Ahab to stay at zero mag size, uh, and meleeing just cancels that reload animation. Um, but luckily for us, the Pimper, Pimpernel has a faster reload animation, so we can, if we need to reload the Pimpernel, we can wait for that to happen and then cancel the Ahab reload. Wait, wait, so what? those were four bosses. Yep, they died very, very quickly. Yep. Uh, you and think then, hard in my casual play, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then just in like in base game, uh, we can actually uh, take advantage of fast travels unlocking early with different playthroughs. Uh, we actually don't have the next fast travel right away, but because we have the DLC completed in normal mode, we can use it to fast travel here, and then reselecting UVHM puts us at this point, which is the next valid travel. And then a lot of this map is really just going to be a lot of movements, and then also taking advantage of Salvador's skill, get some, uh, which I explained during Control Core Angel, just like, it'll, it'll cool down our action skill while we're using it, uh, so that we have it when we need it. Yep, shooting an enemy gives you more cooldown rate, um, and these... We are shooting enemies. These crates are definitely enemies, you yep. promised. Normal enemies. So right there, that's an enemy, we have more cooldown. So Brick is going to do the classic D&D thing of uh, fighting everybody, even if you don't need to. There we go. Good job, Brick. Uh, and then, uh, because we haven't had enough of him, uh, we get to meet our good old friend again uh, on, the br on the bridge. Here he is. Uh, thankfully, uh, with, with the good old scroll wheel, we can skip his dialogue so we don't have to listen to him. Uh, and then at this point, we need to hit a trigger and then backtrack to where Claptrap's about to go. Um, but if we make it there before him, he'll actually warp to said hill. So we're going to jump up here. Wow. Nice. That uh, one's tight. Yeah, that's a, that's a really difficult My trigger. question was jump. about to be, like, are these like, as easy as does that make some look like some of those big gems? No. No, no, no they are Absolutely not. <laughs> very difficult. Uh, but yeah, from here, we are just going to grab some uh, pieces. You can... Uh, Go for some donations. Yeah. Fantastic. We still have plenty coming in. We have $25 from CT Legion that says, gotta love late night Borderlands runs. Thank you for everything you do, GDQ. Thank you so much. Oh, uh, one thing. I will say, there's a puzzle here where you're supposed to jump on a bunch of rocks, but instead if you just jump over to it, puzzle. Uh, oh, never mind. It's fine. <laughs> we'll, just, we'll, oh. just, we'll, we'll just do the puzzle again. Yeah. Use a puzzle right, again. Puzzle solved. <laughs> now we can do more donations. So you, <laughs> right. You're supposed to keep going after that, but instead we're going to save quit. Um, and this is going to be a common theme in this DLC. Uh, walls don't exist. exist. Um, uh, so we could just do some parkour on these rocks and then make our way back to the third um, rune. Wow. All right. There we go. Okay, now you're good for donations. <laughs> Okay, we have $250 from a tall shade of the color red that says, let's see that tech. And yeah, it's been absolutely amazing to watch. So thank you for this run, and I'm really glad we got to see it. We have $25 from Dark Hell, from, from Dark Hell. From, from Dark Hell. <laughs> <laughs> they got me on that one. That says, glad to see BL2 get back in. So proud to step. One of four train, choo choo. So we have a boss coming up. Uh, boss. Lisa. It's a boss. It's a boss. Yeah. <laughs> Technically. Common theme. Um, yep. yep. <laughs> so he emptied his Ahab again. Um, and then he actually shot the boss so that he's flagged already. Oh. And, and then, uh, like we said, boss. There we go. Boss. Yep. Yep. Uh, play an echo. So once we grab the uh, the rune, it'll actually skip some dialogue, and then convenient teleporters will put us back in the floor. Actually, don't worry about it. We're fine. <laughs> so now there's some uh, real, real classic Borderlands humor here. Don't even get to hear. We don't, it. We don't get to hear. It. <laughs> yep. Uh, and then here, another save put will allow us to travel to the next area, Hatred Shadow, which very, this, very this is the, the this is this is the most difficult area in this DLC. Um, there's no triggers throughout. Uh, all you have, just have to do is get to the end, uh, and it is a very vertical area, um, which means you have to do a lot of vertical and very difficult jumps to traverse it really, really quickly. Yeah. So we haven't really asked for an all run, but coming up here is actually going to be like a, a serious time. 
So okay. if he gets this, I need everybody to pop off as hard as possible because not this one. Okay, one uh, one please, one. okay we're good. There we go. yeah. I'm actually going to get some kills for more duration real quick. Yeah, so it's one of the difficulties of going through here is you just got to make sure you keep the gun zerk the whole time because not having gun zerk uh, means you either have to wait for it or safe quit, and safe quitting would be back here. It's a little bit of out of bounds traversal. Oh. And he's at the end. Yep, and we're at the end. The dragon from the beginning of the campaign and then of one more boss. Roll, bar, initiative! Oh, oh like wait, it's another map. Boss. I don't think he is. Kind of wish I'm sorry. Wouldn't. I got the wrong. <laughs> it is okay. Everything looks like okay. This is still a difficult jump to get over this gate. Uh, I don't think I'll have enough gun dirt. No, no. Okay, we'll just okay, wait for that's the fine. Okay. That's okay. Well, you can clap anyway, because that's really hard. <laughs> <laughs> I promise I'm, I know which jump I'm thinking of. It's a little bit later. Uh, so from one difficult map straight to the next, because why wouldn't it be like that? Yeah. Um, <laughs> a pull lever, and once the dialogue starts, we're going to save quit, which will keep us up here, um, which you might think is kind of weird. But uh, the um, top part of these walls uh, doesn't don't have collision. Common trend. Um, yeah. And then we can actually boost off of said wall that we run through to get us all wow. the way to this part of the map. This is sick. And then we are actually going to trigger an objective from out of bounds, if I can keep myself out of bounds. We're going to hit this and then traverse uh, some more out of bounds terrain. OK, we're good. <laughs> and then you see the next objective is over there. So we need to uh, make our way over there. If we're good. This looks like a Doom out of bounds right here. Yeah, <laughs> I was about to say, it's very Doom 2016. It's a, uh, hit that objective, and then, yeah, we're pretty much home safe. I say that, but we still have the other half of the out of bounds of this map. <laughs> it, the main game doesn't have too much in terms of out of bounds. It has a couple of small out of bounds sections. Uh, this area, you need the most Gunzerk duration, yeah. is because you're out of bounds for so long. Bloodshot is probably the most like egregious out of bounds that the main game does. Yep. So, because we hit those two triggers, we can fall through the ceiling again <laughs> and put us towards the end of the map. Right here. Oh, nice. And then Roland appeared to kick some butt. Thank you, Ronald. <laughs> the Ronald. No, Ro Ronald's See, he was fine back in control court. Yeah. Nothing happened to yeah. him. So, here's Angel, but not Angel. It's definitely not Angel. Yep. Uh, right here, I'm actually going to do a bunch of venueing real quick. Going to put on a, a bunch of random stuff. Of course, you've uh, got a quad from that quest. <laughs> don't worry about it. <laughs> We're not going to. So, no, won't go into too much detail about the um, stuff we have. Uh, however, the big thing you need to know is that we swapped out the Ahab for the World Burn, which has uh, a lot more base damage than the. Um, than the Ahab, uh, and it's also fire, so it'll make this fight go a lot faster. Uh, so we're going to keep a low damage launcher in my hand to slag the daughter, and then she's dead. <laughs> if you're playing that casually, she has th two, three different phases with invincibility frames, but if you can do as much damage with that gear that he had on, uh, you can just one-shot her and skip all those phases. So we went back into TVHM, which hasn't started the DLC on this save file. Warps us back to the beginning of it. And then we use the save there to warp to uh, this map. Skips a very, very long elevator ride. Yep. And we're okay, I'm going to take my time going over yes. this. What? Uh, terrain? All right, cool. Uh, going to jump over that teleporter. Very important. Um, because if you touch that before hitting that trigger, uh, you will soft lock. Or sorry, hard lock. You actually cannot progress if you hit the teleporter beforehand. This is the final boss. Uh, he actually has a surprising amount of HP, um, so sometimes it's difficult to kill him. But again, money shot, pimper having, it's it. Can I have guns? Ross can die. Okay. Quite easy. Yep. So his three three different phases. Three, four. The fourth one is number three ten, point two. Yeah. <laughs> so he's okay. continuing to melee to keep the Ahab from reloading. Not the Pimpernel reload, keep punching to get the Ahab there. And then we've killed the Sorcerer. That's not time yet. Uh, we timed this DLC by either seeing the credits or turning in the final quest. 
And it's faster to just turn in the, the final quest. Yep. Yep. So we have to sit through a couple cutscenes, but they're one of the more sentimental ones. This is a DLC that everyone likes, so we get to see the, the yeah. cutscenes that makes everyone We don't get to see the final one, sad. but that's okay. So do you want to do some side quests, or...? You need to accept it. Roland is dead. I know! What? Roland's with Angel. No, we kept him alive. Roland's with Angel. Yeah. Roland's chilling. It's my yeah. story. What do you mean, Dad? <laughs> you know what? It's okay. He doesn't have to go. Not if you don't want him to. Yeah, keep going. I actually want to know how the story is. Thank you. As the sorcerer's fatal spell hurtled toward the oblivious night, it was clear that only a miracle would save him. But luckily for the knight, a miracle is exactly what he got. Glad that we kept Ludwig alive. Yep. That, that yep. really helped save Roland, because he's exactly. also alive. <laughs> they both are. Yeah. See, look at them. They're chilling. Uh, so going from one cutscene straight to the next. So, what did you guys think so if you remember fun? way early on, um, Jack was taunting us about a certain course that, that he just purchased with his vast wealth. Well, who else could possibly bring the light back to the world? Who else but the most beautiful, I still can't believe they made this real. <laughs> queen in history! <laughs> this is sad horse. Wow. <laughs> if, you, uh, if you feed butt sign radium, she poops guns. And that's the joke. I don't know that there's much more than that. The obvious Borderlands way? Yep. But we're rapidly approaching the end. Some more dialogue skills at the end allows us to give her the iridium earlier. She just spit out a ton, but we still have to feed her some. Yep. Makes sense, I swear. So we'll feed the iridium, save quit here. Uh, and then we just have to turn in the quest to Roland, who is chilling back at Flame Rock Refuge. And time, so, time is yeah, coming up soon. Time's coming, coming up real soon. soon. Here's way to end. Scream one more time. And yeah, time. 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 Great job, the set. Well, yeah, phenomenal yeah. job. Great yeah. job, dude. I love this category so much. When it comes to main game and DLCs, oh, just done. the movement throughout the entirety of it is amazing. Um, it also has a really high skill ceiling, so uh, it's just super, super fun to just be able to boost yeah, through a game which you might not expect to see rocket jumping in. Yeah. Um, but yeah, again, if you want to learn more about this game and how to run it, uh, you can join the Discord, which is on the speedrun.com page, speedrun.com forward slash BL2. Um, and then, yeah, if you need to ask any questions, to learn anything about the run, you can do so. With a tutorial coming. Yes, tutorial, tutorial coming, coming soon, soon Tim. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's all I have to say. Yeah, so, killed it. Thank you guys for watching, man. and thanks for allowing me to be here. Good job, show off this amazing game. Thank you so much for that incredible back-to-back -back Borderlands 2 runs. Absolutely amazing. And thank you to everyone in the chat and in the crowd for helping us meet that incentive because that was absolutely incredible. <laughs> all right. It's getting a little late for me here. So <laughs> thank you all so much for having me at the host desk live in Bloomington. It's been an absolutely incredible first shift for me. My name is Frozen Flygon. I will see the rest of you tomorrow. Have a fantastic evening and enjoy the rest of these incredible speed runs.
Hello, Games Done Quick. My name is Lawrence Sontag, and I am very pleased to welcome you to the 100% run for Doom Eternal. Thank you for staying up or waking up or, yeah, let's hear it. Or just naturally being up. I appreciate it regardless, and you are in for a treat. We got some donations first. Mr. Aardvark is here with $25, says, I've been watching all week and donating when I can. Thank you to everyone for making GDQ such a great event. Shoutouts to the wonderful tech crew and organizers who deserve as much applause as the fantastic runners. Good luck, have fun, stay hydrated, big love. Less than three. And if I may, I have a bit of a request. Since we are live in person, and since Doom Eternal is such a beautiful game, if you guys ever feel, anyone in the audience, anyone watching, if you see something amazing, feel free to let everyone in the world know as loudly as you can, because our runner is going to feed off of your energy. And I want the people at home to know that this is a Games Done Quick in person. And all those cheers come through on the mics. Yeah, that's what I like to hear. So let's get that Doom Slayer energy running through the crowd, huh? Phil donates $50, writes very good work by all involved, keep up the good work. I think we will. Unhappily Henry, a bit of a misnomer there, donated $150, says love the event and love you all. Thanks everyone for the hard work. See, it doesn't sound very unhappy. Okay, that didn't take very long. We are ready right now for Doom Eternal 100% Nightmare Difficulty Restricted. That'll get explained in a minute. 